Hey everyone, um, this is just a hopefully a brief video just comparing the Bentley and the Corvette. I'm going to be using the track Monza, uh, no other reason apart from just I know the track really well. That's it. So, you know, when I'm using trying out new cars, I tend to try and stick to a track that I know very well so that I know because I already know where to push and and what I already expect from 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 the cars on certain corners so yeah um, I'm using AI on this as well but I mean I'm only using the AI basically just to just to put rubber down basically help add a bit more grip to the grip to the session so I think I use about 20 AI and I was on the practice session for about an hour ish roughly anyway for both cars um, so yeah, uh, and then on each, basically for each car, I'm just going to let you see the see the lap without me talking over it, and then after that, I'll just you know give you a brief overview of what I learned uh, with the telemetry um, with each car. So with that said, let's move on to the Corvette first. Yeah, so really enjoying this car. Very, um, I weren't really too sure at the beginning, but now I really, really like it now. Um, top speed of this car so far, as you're going to see here, is about just touching the 280, um, which is, you know, really pretty fast, especially with no draft. Um, yeah, the braking, I think the braking is probably the, the hardest thing I found with this car to get used to. It's like it's, the braking distance isn't bad, it's just. Um, it's just a little sketchy, like the the rear end tends to get like um, tends to lock up quite easily. So um, I don't know if you you can just see the car just swaying that little bit coming into the chicane there. Um, but yeah, I mean I, I, to deal with it, I just had to be you know just got to be a bit more anal when it comes to like a braking. I've got to be very sensitive, you know, a bit softer. Can't be as heavy footed basically. So. Yeah, like the way this car turns in as well, like with the Lesmos, like it turns in so well. With a bit of mid oversteer, I don't know, on, on exit as well, but I, you know, tweaks a few things in the setup to change that up. Just a little bit loose there again. Deals with that bump quite well, to be fair. Um, also, with this car as well, uh, you've got to take into consideration that it has a fuel consumption on this track anyway of like four four liters per lap roughly just a bit above just a bit below um, and it's got f a full tank capacity of 120 liters so you're basically looking at about 30 laps for something like this now 
I mean, this is obviously going to vary with different people. You know, everybody uses different, sort of, you know, different techniques and driving, different fuel consumption. But, um, but yeah, I'm only, only um, using that as a reference when I'm doing all the different cars, so you'll know roughly what you'll be using. If you, you know what you're using with one car, you'll know what you could potentially be using with the others. Um, but um, but yeah, so you're looking at yeah, like I said about 30, 30 laps max. But but no, nah, man, really impressed with the car. Like I said, I, w I wasn't really too sure about it at the beginning, but but um, but yeah, ch changing a few things with the setup that I'll put uh, obviously a, a, a link to in the in the dis in the description um, really helped. Like I like to have like a low low wing, like low downforce. Um, I like my rear being a little bit loose, not too loose, but a little bit loose, free it up. It makes it a lot easier to turn. And, but um, but yeah, very impressed with this car. Very impressed. I'll let you watch the rest of this uh, TV cam, and I'll after this it will be the uh, move on to the Bentley. is okay. So yeah, that was my lap with the Bentley. Um, so straight straight from the off, you're going to see that top speed of this car uh, is 277, which is you know pretty close to the Corvette. Not as good, but obviously you know pretty close. So they're they're both very powerful cars. Obviously, renowned for their straight line speed. Um, but yeah, so then next up, the braking. Braking on this car, I don't think was as sketchy as the Corvette. I think it was a little bit easier to to keep the rear under control although you're going to see here on the second chicane I kind of like start losing the rear a little bit swaying a bit but in general I think it was a little bit easier to control the uh, 
the braking with this car anyway. Although I think the distance is, I think the distance is probably like the braking distance is probably the same with the Corvette. I think um, turning with this car again is a little bit understeery. Like it doesn't turn in as good as uh, the Corvette, so you just got to be aware of that. Mid maybe a little bit understeer, but then exit definite oversteer. So you got to be very careful on the exit. Like you have to, you know, again feather the throttle to uh, keep that car on track. Uh, deals with bumps pretty well. Um, I think it unsettles it a little bit. Well, it's unsettled this car a little bit more than the Corvette. I think maybe I might need to do a little setup change or something. But um, but yeah, man, really impressed with the car. Uh, drives very similar to the race room version. Like I said, like you just basically turn in the car with a throttle. Like so, to kind of compensate for the understeer, you tend to use the throttle to be a bit more aggressive if you want to turn in more and. You know, just ease off it if you feel like you're turning in a bit too much. So, yeah, you know, very um, felt felt right at home in behind the wheel this car. Uh, fuel consumption, fuel consumption, can't even talk. Fuel consumption on this car was 3.6 per lap, which is much better than the Corvette. So you're looking at, but and the fuel full tank is 115. So you're looking at about 31, maybe 32 laps with uh, with the full tank of this car. So um, that you know, they take that into consideration if you're going to pick this sort of Corvette. Um, and that's like, uh, what is that? That's uh, that is zero point. Yeah, that's like, yeah, ten percent using ten percent less fuel in this car than you were with the Corvette. So I guess all that top line speed is going to pay pay somewhere. Um, but yeah, again, you know, really like this car. I'm not too sure which one I prefer. I probably I'll probably be a bit biased and say the Bentley because I'm so f familiar with it. But yeah, I think I've definitely got more time in both of these cars anyway. I think with the Corvette, a 47 is possible. With this one, I think with the Bentley, probably another two temps. I think I made a mistake somewhere on on on, on the lap anyway. So yeah, another two temps for sure. Um, but yeah, anyway, uh, I should be bringing the. McLaren, the, the, the last three cars, the McLaren, the Mercedes, AMG, and the Radical, in the next couple of days. Uh, but um, but yeah. So uh, thanks for watching, guys. Um, hope you liked it. And um, oh oh yeah, also obviously I'll be leaving the the setups in the description. If you guys find a better better setup or an improvement, please let me know. But um, but yeah, man, I'll catch you guys on the next one. Later.